prayer of giving him my will, that was the day that he was able to intercede into my heart and work with me. He couldn't do, he couldn't do anything with me as long as I kept taking back my will and living the way that I wanted to. As long as he was opening the prison doors and letting me out, then I was able to get out and have my way again. But there was that day that he opened my heart, the prison doors of my heart, and he let me be free. And Jesus came in, and he broke them in chains. And I haven't been the same since. Matter of fact, I can't see living my life without God every day. I can't wake up and breathe without first telling him how grateful I am to have another day of life. But before then, every day was a challenge to figure out how I was going to get my next shot of dope on my next fix. And let me tell you something, what a miserable life, and I thought that was the way that I was happy. I wanted to share with you tonight, out of Acts, this is going to be Acts 9, this is going to be about Saul's conversion to Paul. We'll begin at verse 1, and I'll be reading now the new world, uh, the, the new, uh, you know, the contemporary English version. Saul kept on threatening to kill the Lord's followers. He kept, he even went to the high priest and asked for letters to the Jewish leaders in Damascus. He did this because he wanted to arrest and take to Jerusalem any man or woman who had accepted the Lord's way. When Saul had almost reached Damascus, a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. He fell on the ground and he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why are you so cruel to me? Who are you? Saul asked. I am Jesus, the Lord answered. I am the one you are so cruel to. I was a Saul. And there's many Sauls in the room tonight. There's many people that were Sauls. And we've been converted. And then there's some that hasn't yet. I started out a drug addict at the age of about nine. And I thought it was a way of life. And I had hate starting from that age, from a stepdad that was abusive. I had anger because my mother kept leaving me and deserting me in my life. And I had resentment because of the poverty and the poor life condi conditions that I was living in. And I was raised up a very angry and confused person. Once I heard about church and stuff and things like that, I was really like Paul. I didn't want you know, nothing to do with it. I felt uncomfortable. I felt uh, ashamed to be around anybody talking about Jesus. And uh, it affected my walk in life. It affected my growing up and learning how to live a productive life and be a, a, a member of society that people wanted to be around. Paul was out, and he was going, and he, he, was, he was getting letters from high authority and he was able to do this legally because he had them buffaloed into believing that this right here was a cult and this was a way to take away from the money from these people. It was pulling people uh, away from the things that they thought was right. And it was a false religion. And these people were even out to just kill anybody that said anything in the name of Jesus. Well, that's why I was you know, wanting this song played tonight because in the name of Jesus, I was saved. In the name of Jesus, I've seen lives change. In the name of Jesus, I've seen prayers answered. In the name of Jesus, he sacrificed everything for me. I tell you, what an honor to serve a God that would give his only begotten son to me. I seen that for what it was one day when I was in prison and I was singing in the choir. And I seen Jesus, I seen a vision of Jesus and he was strung out on that cross and he was looking at me. And it wasn't a word spoken from what the vision I seen, it was everything I saw. And he said, just for you in that vision, just for you, Shane. So Jesus hung on that cross, not for just everyone, but to have a personal relationship with you. Praise God that God didn't have to knock me off of a high horse with a bright light and blind me for a few days. But I did go through hell before I got straight in my life. I did go through 
some things that I should have died in. I should have, I should have been dead a long time ago. I want to tell you the opportunity that God has given me is to go back into the prisons and to minister to men that are behind the bars in the whites. He's given me the opportunity to minister to the public here at the recovery group, and I believe that this is just the beginning of the tip of the iceberg that God has for people that are called according to his purpose. Now, a lot of people won't do it because of different things, different reasons. It took Paul to get struck down by a light and Jesus to speak out to him to get his attention. Why are we holding back? Why do we have to wait on the light? Why do we have to wait on the Lord for us? We are not promised tomorrow. God never promised that to us. But today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So this is the day that I'm going to work on tomorrow. Amen? This is the day that I'm going to try to keep it right. Amen? Because there's no struggle or nothing that you ain't going through or any temptation that God said he don't understand what you're going through. Let me tell you something. He can deliver you from drugs. He can deliver you from whatever you're going through. Like Brother Fackery said, the gambling addiction. I can understand where he's coming from because right there is something that I started out doing a little bit and I knew whenever it kept taking all my money that was enough because I wasn't no good at winning. I was going to stay broke. So if it wasn't something that I could gain out of it, I wasn't for it. I got married a bunch in my life. I had different wives. I couldn't be settled with one. And God's taught me different. I can be happy with what he gives me. I don't have a lot of everything, but everything that I do have is a blessing from God. I know that I don't have to get struck down by a bright white light and Jesus speak to me anymore. All I have to do is be listening. Are we listening today? Are we listening to the Lord's voice? Are we hearing him? Are we truly walking in what the word of God tells us to walk in? If you're not, let me tell you something. You're missing out on some blessings and you're, and you're living in a, in, a, in a lifestyle of lies. Let me tell you something. The enemy comes as an angel of light and he's trying to prove to you that he's an angel of light and he's not. He's an angel of darkness. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And let me, I'm going to tell you tonight that drugs are a big fish hook in his fishing boat. He has a big old long fishing pole and 2,000 pound test lines and he's got lots of good bait on that hook. He's ready to reel in whoever will go for the bait, and he hooks you, and once he does, he'll reel you forever. Once he gets you in the boat, he'll leave you in the sun to dry out and die. Thank God for Jesus, man. Thank God for programs. Thank God for people that are stepping up. Thank God for the community, like the New Beginnings here, that has a recovery program that works that have people that are living the moral standards of the Christian lifestyle and are willing to help people that nobody else wants anything to do with. Believe it or not, statistics are that a lot of the community would like to sweep us under the carpet and forget about us because to us, we're just a problem. Of course, we have problems, but let me tell you something. God loves us. God loves them men in the white down there. I tell you what, when I'm down there and them men are praising God, I, I can feel the Spirit of God so strong in there because those men are hungry. They want to change. They're tired of being locked up and told what to do all day. And nine times out of a ten, whenever people are living the drug, style, the drug life, the lifestyle of the drugs, and they, they get in trouble or they get busted with drugs or they lose their life. When I see those men in there, I see hope. I see a place to where they can get sober, where they can go. They, there's all kinds of ministry in there. They can go to all kinds of classes, and they can get it together. They don't have to be struck down off the horse. They're already on the ground, and Jesus can deal with them in there. That's a place where I believe ministry be, can begin in a man's life. I know the three and a half years that I was in there, that was, that was God's first choice of Bible college for me. Because that's where I learned about the Word of God. That's where I learned to apply it to my life. And let me tell you something. I feel naked without the Bible. I feel naked without God. I feel naked. I feel just empty.
without God in my life. I feel alone. And I don't want that anymore. It was a hole in my heart, and it was the size of this room, and nothing could fill it. And I tried to fill it with many things, including every sin there was out there. God loves you so much tonight that he's looking down upon a people, and he's got his arms open wide, and he's ready for you to come to him. If you don't know him tonight, let me tell you something. There's not a sin that you have committed that he will not forgive. He's not a father that's standing up there with a giant stick or a whip. He's standing up there with open arms, and he's ready to welcome you into his arms of love today. He's not a condemning father, but he hates sin. He hates seeing you live in your sin. He hates you seeing you go through the troubles and the struggles and all of the problems that you're going through in your life. That don't mean when you get saved that they're not going to happen, but we know where to go and we know where to get our help, and that's from God. If it wasn't for God, when I go through my trials and my struggles, man, I don't know how I'd make it without him because he's helped me through some of the biggest things that I've ever been through. I've had a lot of trials since I've gotten saved. One of them was getting saved and then getting out of jail and then having to go back to prison while I was saved. I was like, why, God? He said, because I've got to do work in your life. I was out on bond for 18 months, and I did everything that the, that the Word of God told me to do. And I still had to go back to prison. But let me tell you something. I was facing 99 years. It was a setup for failure. And if it wasn't for God, I would have failed. Because many a time I would have ran. I would have gave up and said, 99 years, I'm gone. Y'all won't see me anymore. Look over in Alaska or somewhere for me because I'm gone. I'm through. But I didn't give up. I trusted God. I trusted God with my life. And I gave God everything. Everything that I owned was his. I said, Lord, I don't want nothing. I came into this world naked, and I'll leave naked. And let me tell you something. God can work with people that are broken. God can work with people that just give him everything. And when I got locked up, I lost everything. My truck, my tools, my wife, all of that was gone. But you know what? That's when I got closest to God, when everything was gone. That's when I had my one-on-one -on -one time with him. I will tell you something about the Lord. It was many times that I was sitting in prison and I wasn't getting a letter. And I'd get closer to God because I would read his letters of love. It was many times that I looked in my locker in prison and I didn't have no food and I didn't have no commissary. And I'd look up and one of my buddies would come through the door with a sack full of groceries and say, I got this for you, Shane. Many a times that God did that for me. He gave me favor with kings in prison. His word will not come back void, I promise you. And if he wants to use you, and if you're a willing vessel, and you don't have to do what Paul did, but once, once that happened to Paul, let me tell you something, that man went all the way because he knew how real God was. He said, blessed are those that believe without seeing. Let me tell you something, man. God is tangible. I felt him coming to my heart. I felt him coming to my life in that four by eight jail cell. I felt him because whenever his presence was so strong, all I could do was bawl like a baby and tell him, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Please, please take care of me, Lord. Help me and guide me and direct me, Father, because I can't do it anymore. I know that you're God, and I trust you, and today I make you Lord and Savior of my life, never taking it back again. Let me tell you something. That was the day that things changed in my life. I had a white sheet, and I looked down, and it had a big puddle in it. And you know, every tear that I cried, I know the angels in heaven were shouting because they knew that was a day that God was able to turn my life around. Even in the recovery group here, I believe that you can still have that tangible and that one-on-one -on -one experience here. No matter what you're going through, we have a loving church here, a family that cares about your needs, that wants to see you succeed. They don't want to see you on drugs. They don't want to see you struggle. They don't want to see you get revoked on your parole or your probation. They want to see you have a productive life, get loved on, and be changed. Because let me tell you something, there's no greater feeling than to walk in Sunday morning into this church. I don't know about any other churches that you go to, but this church here, I walk in there Sunday morning, and I've never had so many people greet me with love, and they all know my past. They love me anyhow because that's what the Father says to do. I tell you what, it's hard to love somebody that's unlovable. My heart was hard. 
I was a very bad person. If you don't believe me, look up my record. All you have to do is go to Donald Shane Douglas and look it up. It'll tell you about a story about from here to probably that jail down there of the, of the hard-hearted life I was living. I was a very angry man. And I was very upset because of the way that my life was. And so I stuck needles in my arm. I took a chance on ODN. I took a chance on getting AIDS. I took a chance on all these different things. But you know what? God spared my life. I didn't get AIDS. I didn't get all them diseases. I'm 51 years old. And God spared my life. And I believe that he spared my life because he knew that I would stand up for him. He knew that I would take a big stand and that I would tell people what he's done for me, that he would use my testimony just like he did for Paul. My testimony is to you tonight that God can change anybody and he loves everybody. There's no person in here tonight or in any prison anywhere that can't be changed. I know I've seen it firsthand. I missed the opportunity to minister to a big old black muscled up guy and I was terrified of him because I knew that that guy right there meant business. When he passed by you, you moved to the side. And he, and he had a bad reputation. And God told me to minister to him and I was like, him? Oh, no, 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 no. And I missed that opportunity and I seen him on down later on in life in the prison, probably a couple more, a couple more months, or maybe even a couple, or maybe even six, seven months, I don't know, a few, but he was going to church, had, had the Bible under his arm, and I knew I'd miss that opportunity, I said, never again, God. Then I realized that the Lord was going to use me in the prisons, and I was like, oh, no, 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 again, I'm mumbling, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to go back to the prisons. But I tell you what, what a joy it is to go in there and minister to those men. Let me tell you something, it gets their attention when they see people that have gotten out and that they can make it. And they want to know how. And I say there's only one way in the name of Jesus. Most of the time when I come out of there, I don't have a voice left because I'm praying so long and, and ministering to those men. And I know that there's men that's coming out of there and their lives have changed. I'm one of them. I know that that's where they begin, can begin their recovery. Because God is in the recovery business, I promise you. God is in, rest in the restoration business. I was a tore up old Mustang, man, and he made me into a beautiful Camaro. <laughs> Only God can do that. Amen? Amen. He's a loving father. He's, a, he's an awesome God. He gave his only son. His only son. I tell you, I'm really proud of my son, Aaron. That boy right there has came a long ways in the two years that he's been with me. That was one boy that I was on my knees in the jail praying that God would not take his life when he was born because he was born with holes in his heart and he wasn't expected to live. I made a deal with the father that day. I said, Lord, if you'll save my son's life, I'll start serving you. And guess what I didn't do? He saved his life and I didn't keep my end of the bargain for at least five years. And then God kept dealing with me and dealing with me and dealing with me and I kept going back to prison, going back to prison, going back to prison. This last time, whenever I seen that I was at the end of my rope, I had no more hope. I was tired of being desperate. I was tired of being strung out. I was tired of being lost. I was tired of being unhappy. That was when I realized that I needed God more than ever. I was in a cell by myself, my alone time, and I knew whose name I needed to call on. That was the name of Jesus. I'll tell you something, the power and the presence of God was so strong in that cell that day. I want to tell you, I just want to explain this to you in such a way that you'll get it. It was so strong that his touch was so loving, it was so powerful that all I could do was weep. That's all I wanted to do was rest in his arms. And that's what he wants from you today. Is he wants you to have a personal relationship with him, one that you won't forget. The day that that happened, I'll never forget it. It'll be my testimony for the rest of my life. I'm sure that Paul, and he did in the Bible, gave his testimony of how God saved him, how he knocked him off the horse, how he blinded him. And he gave that testimony in the Bible over and over. It's powerful. It's powerful when God can change a man that's been, you know, persecuting Christians and killing them and totally against the faith, like I was, except I was trying to kill myself and I was taking down anybody else I could with me. I have so many assault records on my on my I have so many assault cases on my record 
that whenever they I, they ask me if I they they say uh, Shane Douglas, if we make you a trustee, are you going to harm any of our officers? 